So now that we have reviewed some of these attribute tables for these three layers, let's take a look at some of the data that you might not get if you were to download this data from a city database. So a city database is set up to run in a SWIM environment and Flow2D needs a little bit of extra detail. So SWIM environment needs a, um, let's start with depth. So every single node needs an invert elevation and a maximum depth. Now the maximum depth is going to be the difference between the surface of the system and the bottom of the uh, node. So the surface elevation of each of these systems is going to come off the grid layer. So if you take one of these points and you sample the grid layer, what you're going to get in that point is a grid element number, which is right here. Well, this is the grid element number from a different project. So um, let me pause the video. I'm going to set it up so that we can sample the grid element number into this field, and then I will show you how to use that to get your elevation data. Okay, so what I've done is I have set up a, a spatial join system using Saga where we want to add a polygon attribute to a point uh, to a vector layer point and what we have is the outfalls are our points and the grid is our vector layer and the attribute that we want is called elevation so i'm going to go ahead and set that up just like this and then i click run and then i close well then when it's done you just close it and the result is that you get the elevation straight and it's the so you can switch to this one or you can use this as your new shape file just rename it outfall delete the old one and then you now have a rim elevation for each one of your outfalls and it's the exact same thing with the um inlets and junctions um you get a grid element elevation becomes your rim elevation and then your maximum depth. So I'm going to close this out because we already have one in our junction field. Uh, you see here we have the elevation grid. Looks like right here. This is your elevation grid and this is your maximum depth. So the maximum depth takes the, this is your grid element elevation minus the invert elevation, so your, grim ele your grid elevation is the invert elevation of, or sorry, is the rim elevation of your structure, and your invert elevation is, is the invert, and then so the maximum depth becomes the grid ele elevation minus the invert elevation, and this is a calculated field, so what you do with this one is you come back over here to your, let me make this a little bit smaller so we can manage it better, you come here to your editor, and you set this to that field maximum depth and then you say the maximum depth is rim elevation or grid element elevation right here minus invert elevation which you can also get from here minus sorry let me get it back up here invert elevation oh sorry that did not work okay that did not work so let me show you a different way to get it you can either type it out or you can use this guy right here and if you have this guy you'll have over here you have your um, fields and you can put well let's see that was elevation so here's that elevation field so elevation minus invert elevation and you can see down here that there's a preview. And if you want to um, format that, let's see, you can say format number. So put your cursor here, format number, that will be, uh, hang on one moment, that will be this part of the equation here, will go right here. So elevation minus, invert elevation and then the number and then the decimal place can be like two or four or whatever we certainly don't want 10 decimal places you know that's ridiculous so let's just keep that to something that two decimal places and then we click okay 
Now that is, here's our formula. Here's our field we're going to apply the formula to, and then we click update all, and all of these will be updated to that new um, maximum depth. And you know the formula is good if you see a value right here and not a, a little red letter just saying not valid. And then you can say, well, the, the project will automatically save these in here. So if you notice, you come in here and you lose one, you'll see that the recent ones that you had are all right here. So that's how you would determine your maximum depth for those features. They come from the grid element. Now, what if your grid element elevation is bad? Let's get our grid element elevation map on here so I can show you what I'm talking about. So this is a street, and you know how in Florida the streets are kind of raised, and they do funny things. Like, let me show you what they do. Uh, they're kind of they're kind of unique. Florida streets and and streets in the southeast are unique compared to streets in the southwest. So let's take this street right here, and let's grab a profile tool right here, and let's go ahead and just make a profile along our street. Whoops, sorry, I have to add the elevation raster. And you see what the street does. Watch my cursor along there. The street goes up and down, and the down, the invert of the street is where your inlets are gonna be because the water is gonna flow from the, the crown to the trough, from the crown to the trough. And that's, so that's how the, the inlets and stuff work in Florida. So if you take a look at this from the um, aerial, you're also going to see that something else is going on here. Okay, we have this curb and gutter system and a sidewalk on this street. So if you look at that elevation, you're going to see that the sidewalk is over here is pr pretty high compared to the street. So let me show you this. So if I grab this, you can see that we have a crown, um, a, a, a median right here, and then the street has a very distinct slope down to the gutter, and then the top of the uh, outside median, and then slope off to the thing or off the sidewalk right here. So that is how your uh, your crown on your roadway work to get that water off the streets. They have a pretty distinct slope to get that water off the streets. So if you look at that from the perspective of a grid element, I'm gonna turn on the schema layer so we can see the grid element. If this grid element is, let, let's find one where we have a good example of a grid element that's just too close to the sidewalk. And that is this one, maybe not that one. This one right here, let's say if this is an inlet, let's grab, let's grab an ID tool and let's ID that storm drain. So I'm gonna put my cursor right here on the storm drain and I'm gonna turn all these back off because I want to see, oh shoot, I haven't calculated it yet. So let me turn those back on, sorry about that. So I wanna see this. So this inlet is, um, let's see a couple of things about it. First of all, Let's ID the cell that it's on. So if I use this tool, I'm gonna ID right here. And the elevation of that cell is 8.108 feet. But if you look at the elevation in the profile, let's just take the elevation of the profile right here. Then our elevation is 7.8. So the grid element takes all of that elevation from the sidewalk and it raises that up and basically that inlet might not get any water. So the way to fix that would be to make sure that your inlets are on the cell that is going to be low and capture all that water. So that's, that's just one way to look at it. And then if you do, of course, if you make that adjustment with that inlet right there, you have to also make the adjustment to the conduits. So let me show you here. And now we need that snapping tool. And we need to snap, let's just say snap to all layers. Okay, so then we're gonna snap our two conduit ends and make sure that they're touching. 
So that's kind of how you get make what the idea is to make sure that the inlets can the water can get to the inlet due to the fact that inlets always happen on an area on a location where there's a steep distinct change in elevation. It'll either be a curb and gutter versus a sidewalk or a head wall versus you know the side of a basin or something like that. So be careful your position of the in and make sure that the position makes that inlet on the cell that has the lower elevation so it can get water. Um, so that that's your maximum depth. That's how you get your maximum depth. That's how you make sure that your inlet's going to get water. And let me see. I was also going to talk about one more thing. So let me pause the video so I can remember what it was. Okay, my next, the last thing I wanted to talk about with storm drain development was inlet geometry because when you're putting together a storm drain system, the uh, storm drain from your city is probably not going to have inlet geometry. You're going to have to either develop that either from as built data or from like, I typically can use a combination of as built data, street view, and then if I can't get one off a of street view, I can do a site visit. So let's talk street view for a moment. So first of all, let's take a look and see if we can get any information off of the Google satellite and just get rid of our elevation. And if we can get down in here, sometimes you can see the length of an inlet, specifically because you can see the opening of the grate, which might be that guy right there, or sometimes you can see like a change in the coloring on the sidewalk that indicates how long the uh, inlet is. Also, you might see like the position of a manhole, like you can see that's probably a manhole right there. But if you can't see anything off of yet that overhead map, another thing that you can do is go to the um, street map. So let's see if we can come, now I don't know what street this is. Yeah, this is the same area, about the same area. So let's see what we can grab by using this street view tool and just pop it in here somewhere and see if we can get some details from some of these curb and gutter inlets. Unfortunately, there's a lot of traffic in Florida, so this might not be as effective but I bet you we can get, I bet you we can find one. What I typically like to do is I like to bring my um, map, let's can barely, uh, right here, see, we got it, we got it right there. And that's clearly, okay, that's not a three footer, but it's not a 17 footer either. So that's a six to 10 foot right there. That's a six to 10 footer. And it's got one, two segments of concrete so I'm guessing that's a six footer right there, six foot opening. So um, another thing that you can do is you, that's really super handy is you can take your, uh, let me get back here, sorry about that. You can take your uh, conduits and you can export that data. So I'm gonna save as, export, save features as, and I'm gonna save that to a KML because a KML can be brought right into um, Google Maps. So let's just put that as WGS84 generic, which is right here. This 4328 should be good. Or even this one, that one uh, might also work. That We want that to be lat long, right? We want that to be lat long. So it's either this one or this one, I think. Let's just do WGS and see what we get. Well, we only get two. So I'm going to use this one because I think that 4328 is a value that I typically see. And that's like the whole world. So you click OK and then you don't need it. Save it to the map. And then you just go put that back into your storm drain folder. We're going to call it conduits and save it and click OK and click OK. And now I want to go to, go, um, this is Google Earth Pro. It's the desktop version. I think that's kind of important. And I'm going to go, I don't know that I have a, uh, a, a my place for this project. So I think that's a different project. So I'm going to just do this. I'm just going to click off of there. And I'm going to grab my conduits.kml 
which is right here, and drag and drop it straight onto the map. Uh-oh, that might not have been. Well, let's just see what it does. No. No, 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 that was the wrong. That was definitely the wrong. Let me let me delete that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording until I figure out how to do that. I'll be right back. Okay, so I apologize. I told you the wrong thing, but um, my, I, let me show you how I did it. So I I did what I said I was going to do. Right click, export, save feature as. But I didn't mess with this at all. I just left this as is, and uh, then I put this to conduits.kml, exported it. And then I drag it into Google Earth Pro, and what you can see is, well, you can do that with the points layers too, but what you can see is the locations where there would possibly be an inlet, you know, right here. And then you can, like I said, you can bring your points in here. This would be an outfall, inlet, uh, inlet, outfall, um, inlet, several inlets along here. So then we take our guy and we drop him in here and hope for the best you know hope there's no traffic in the way that we can see whatever kind of inlets we have here so we see here that there's just a little manhole uh with a, a gate a graded manhole so that can be going in as a a little manhole or actually that would be a type 3 french drain and then over here even though it's a manhole it's a type 3 and then over here this is a three this one right here is probably a three foot inlet. And then let's see if there's some more over on this side. Yep, over here we have another one, another three footer, and then another uh, French drain manhole right there. So that KML really helps you identify those because uh, like I said, the, the cities will not have this data for you. So you'll have to develop that on your own and you usually go through and do it with manholes. So the cities will typically, they will have invert data at the manholes and you'll have to do all the rest of the invert data yourself. And the cities won't have any of the um, inlet cap geometry because they all, they do all that with like catch basins. Um, in flow 2D, we do that with uh, connecting to the grid and then the water that goes onto that grid element will feed that inlet. All right, so that's kind of it. That's all I really wanted to talk about was for the missing data that you might have and how do you get the uh, depths. And um, I'll stop the video here. And the next video will be setting up the storm drain and calculating the Flow2D storm drain from the pipe and node network.